I got to stop you. I got to yeah. stop you. Uh, Watch you just this, said you bro. made this conversion in what year? I think it was 2018 I started investing, yeah. Okay, well, I, ju I just, just for, as a point of fact, for what it's worth, uh, May 14th, 2019, uh, you came on television and called Bitcoin garbage. Oh. It is a useless currency. It is a useless currency. Uh, oh. to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. Welcome to Cash Daddies. We're banking fatties. Uh, hope you guys had a great week. I'm feeling much better. Thank you for asking. I still have a little earache, but it is what it is. I'm back in the saddle with the boys. Uh, join me as always. From whatever log cabin he's at, Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard. Johnny, how was your week? Good, man. I was, uh, you know, last week I was out of town and uh, just getting back this week, getting settled in, back in the routine. Joining us, he is just the man. He's the whole reason this thing cooks with gas. Yes. My good friend and yours. How are we doing? How are you, buddy? What's going on, Sam? How are you? I'm alive, buddy. I'm feeling good. I'm going to try to stop wearing my hat as much. I'm gonna try to just go with my hair out. I just feel like I give a be I have better energy. So that's it. Just uh, it. I'm excited. Just, just let it go. So, it go. so I wanted to talk real quick about how you might not know this, but I decided to uh, take a bet and buy tickets to the February 9th Lakers versus Milwaukee Bucks game. In which they're guesstimating that's when he's LeBron will bake will break Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record. Now I'm not a huge LeBron fan in terms of his social media and all that stuff. I recognize him as I'm going to put him top six. Okay, fair enough. I'm not a, a big fan day. of his political takes. Yeah. I have moved him up, dude. Yeah, you don't have, have him. He's he. You don't have to be. I don't even know. I don't listen to him, but he is one of the greatest players I've ever seen in my entire life. And I, I, you know, I put him top. You know, you, you got you got Wilt and Cream. You got MJ. Then you get Bird Irving. He's right there. What he's about right like there. Tim Duncan, dude? Yeah, I think he's better than Tim Duncan. Yeah, Tim Duncan's great. But the point Tim is. I spent eight hundred dollars on two tickets. Would you do it? Those two tickets that you spent eight hundred bucks on, Total. they may be worth five thousand game time. That's, I mean, it's possible. It is. Possible. I don't think I would sell them because you don't have these moments. You're not allowed to met to witness like historic sports moments all the time. And yeah, yeah. You can say what you want about LeBron, but numbers don't lie. Numbers are there for a reason because he's acquired them over the past 20 years, and that guy's got a lot of numbers under a lot of different categories. The funniest thing would be if he's like 20, 25 away, and then Sam goes to the game and he just shits the bed, you know, just brick after brick Dude, and misses it, misses listen. it by like two points, something like that. He twists his they're ankle going to, for a dunk in the first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they're going to do everything they can to get that. The, because the next game's out of town. Oh, they, they want, want it at home. It in okay. L.A. Because the game before it is OKC. They don't want this huge moment happening in OKC. Now, can you and imagine? then after that is another, like, so you're like, nobody wants to do it there either. This is the best spot for it to do. He's at home. He finally can have, even though he won that championship in the bubble, which a lot of people don't even want to recognize, I do think it was not an easy thing to do. But this will be his first real Laker moment. I want to see the Greek freak give a game-time speech, pre-game speech, and say, here's the deal, guys. 
when that motherfucker catches the ball, you better be taking his head off because he's not getting 25 tonight. <laughs> I'd like to see the first now, one comes down the paint, the freak just decapitates him. <laughs> well, I'm just going to tell you, if there's any player in the NBA that would do that, it is That's the Greek funny. freak. Yeah, he, he is old it. school competitive. He is. He is. That's a 7-1 freaking nature that just sprints up and down the court the whole time. He plays. Joel he Embiid's plays. like that, too. Those are the only two that are this new school touch butt group. Yeah. Like, they just want to... And guess who else now? And I'm liking their attitude. The Memphis Grizzlies. They're starting to get nasty, dude. Yeah, they are. They, they're missing some. But, you know, they play hard. They play hard. I give them that. They play hard. Um, but I will tell you this. You that you basically made an investment. That's an investment buying those tickets because who knows the appreciation. When it comes down to game time, That what does that place hold? 20000 25000 yeah, something like that. I'm talking, you know, when the celebs start wanting to come in and those tickets go on sale on StubHub, don't be surprised if, if your ticks go up 300%. I could see it happening. I could, I'm too. Even, yeah. So, anyways, guys, enough of sports talk. I want to get into how was your guys' weekend? I mean, how was your week? I'm riding the Bitcoin wave, so okay, not bad. Yeah, I mean... Bitcoin, you know, had a real big run, dropped back a bit. Now it's back up again. But, I mean, from where it was, it's it's showing signs of life. Right, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of bobbing now around 22, 23, up and down, up and down. We'll see if it kind of breaks through to that next level. I don't know. Uh, but I'm just happy where it is, you know, because it was forever. I mean, it seemed like it was going to plunge down below 10. That was the real fear. And then – uh uh, you know, I mean, you got guys like Peter Schiff this week coming out and saying it's a, you know, it's a false rally and that sucker, you know, suckers are going to be taken in again and going to lose their shirts. Like he's been saying since Bitcoin became a thing, uh, when Bitcoin was worth less than a penny, he was, you know, this is bullshit. Uh, and he, he I think he's comparing it now to oh. tulip mania, you know, which was, you know, the collapse of the tulip market in Europe, which is, I mean, just ridiculous. There's nothing similar about the two things. You know, uh, yeah. here's the thing. I think it's a good place to put Peter your money. Schiff. Peter Schiff is he's a smart, smart fucking guy. I like him. Yeah. This guy's been doing this for decades. And his main thing is here you have gold. Gold, yeah. Here you have big. <laughs> yeah, well, he finally found he something you out. can compare it to. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. I mean, he's got gold and bitcoin. He said he says you'd be nuts to put your money in Bitcoin. Put your money in gold. Because gold is the standard. When things drop, inflation go, keeps going up. Gold's going to continue to go up. And let me tell you, gold has. Gold's been bouncing. Um, you know, and, and you can't really say Bitcoin's been bouncing because this is really a dead cat bounce if there ever was one. Um, so, okay, go on. Sorry, how are you? No, I'm just saying, and, and Schiff is a huge lover of gold. He's like that's if oh, he's smart, the guy. Yeah. He's the gold guy. I like gold too. And I mean gold, gold over the past 3 months. Ah uh, shit, man, I'm looking to Listen, I made a lot of money listening to him like what was it? Like 12, 15 years ago when when he when the whole uh well, it would have been around 2008, 2012 because I was in the Ron Paul thing and I put a lot of money in gold and made a lot of money when it went on that huge run. I guess it might have been like 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, so I, I have no I have no hate for Peter Schiff, but I just think he's wrong about Bitcoin here. I should walk over to his office because it's a five minute walk from where I am. I should walk over to his office and walk in and say, "Hey, stop man, bragging, please. Let's get you on the show for ten minutes. Just turn around, Pete. Uh, let us know what you think right now, because you know, Mark Cuban called him out. Mark Cuban says you're an asshole to put money in gold. He says you're stupid to put money in gold. You should be buying Bitcoin." So it's amazing you got – I would put Peter Schiff, as far as investment knowledge, way ahead of Mark Cuban. I mean, yeah. look, I give Cuban credit. He started a company, made money. But as far as regular investing, Peter's forgotten more than Mark Cuban's ever learned. Um, it's a different game, right, you know, Howie? Venture capital and uh, and investing. Yeah. It's not the same. It's not the same, man. You're, you're, you know, you, you have fundamental analysis, technical tech Technical analysis, you, you got a lot of different things that you're looking at versus venture capital. 
you know, you're you're actually selling a product, uh, trying to make a profit, uh, paying everything off, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's what Cuban's great at. But yeah, I would. I should just walk over and be like, Pete, come on, let's grab some coffee. Let's get you on the pod. Tell us what you really think. What do you think about Dickie Hart? What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Pete, remember Pete? Pete had a shot with Hart. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He locked horns with him. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty interesting. So too, I honestly. wanted to, I must send you this, Johnny. Okay. Um, I want to send you this real quick because it's super awesome. And, um, Dude, it's not you boobs again. It's not naked yoga again, is it? Naked yoga and boobs. No, it's not naked yoga. Please stop. Dude, Why sends me naked awesome, yoga Johnny? all the time. What's better than naked yoga? Okay, you get tired of it. This is you get tired awesome, of it. Johnny. Please zip your pie hole, please. Well, are I'm you sending it or what? Content. Yeah, it I'm like trying. trying to talk about sending me something. Yeah, well, I'm sending while I'm talking to you about sending it. Okay, I'm sending you the this is amazing. Uh, sending you uh. What? Uh, uh, yeah, shut up. Okay, so I uh, I'm saying you this right now. This is oh, amazing. Okay. So, um, his you know Kevin O'Leary, right? He's on Shark Tank. Pies, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Patrick Bet David was doing a segment. This is from Vault Entertainment, Value Entertainment. I'm a big fan of Patrick. Uh, Bet David, I love his. He's from uh, uh, LA, moved to Florida. I believe he's Armenian. Big fan of his content. And they were breaking down how Kevin O'Leary has flip flopped on on Bitcoin right around when he got about fifteen million dollars from uh, SBF and FTX. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. By the way, uh, it this, looks like Sean Payton's going to the Broncos. They just traded for him. So. Oh, dude, he wanted that Chargers gig, and they're idiots for not getting him. They're idiots. They're idiots. Are you? How are you sending that to me, Sam? Email. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, or or Larry's Canadian, so let's just start right there. He's a Canadian. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. Keep going. Keep going. I'm listening. You know, he's a Canadian. And I, I really would like this is also a guy that had Sam Bankman's uh, back for a long time, had his back for quite yeah. a while. Uh, well, you know, uh, he started off by talking about how Bitcoin's garbage. It has no value. It means nothing. Then FTX comes along, throws him a bag of loot. And suddenly now he's like, Bitcoin is the future, all that yeah. stuff. And, you know, I mean, like a lot of people. Yeah, see if you can get it right there. Let's Phenomenal watch. job from... to both of them. Look what they do to Kevin O'Leary. Just watch. It's, it's painful okay. to right. brace for this impact. This is amazing. Right. <laughs> watch this. By the way, singing I love the blues here. right now at all. Oh, yes, I'm singing the blues. Why? Because your $15 million didn't pan yeah. out? That you That's a lot of money hey, to listen. be a, a paid spokesperson. <laughs> It's a lot of money. You didn't have to do much for that. That's per, that's found that's money. That's a different Kevin. decision. That's a different discussion. Okay. I, the, I, you know, you can make that decision on your own. But I'm going to this point found money. that if that's you like want to say he's guilty street. before he's tried, I just don't understand it. But this, you went from Charlie Munger's view on yeah. Bitcoin to Michael Saylor's view on Bitcoin, and I actually kidded you about it. I said, "Who are you? You 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 may know nothing, but you're never in doubt. You're so strident when you said it was just." worthless and rat poison he's getting in and then ass. six months later you're like Love this here. bitcoin bull and and i so i didn't understand that conversion did that conversion <laughs> coincide with the 15 million that you got from wow. from ftx did you hear that <laughs> yeah no i was investing three and a half years Listen. earlier than that i changed my mind back in early 2018 when i saw the regulators in Watch jurisdictions this, like canada bro. switzerland and abu dhabi start to change their minds i gotta stop you i gotta yeah. stop you um Watch you just this, said you bro. made this conversion in what year? I think it was 2018 I started investing, yeah. Okay, well, I, I just, just for, as a point of fact, for what it's worth, uh, May 14th, 2019, uh, you came on television and called Bitcoin garbage. Oh. It is a useless currency. It is a useless currency. Uh, that's what I believe. I don't think you should just be... Just by the way, did you them. catch all of that? Yes. I love it. Yep. Putting their foot okay, to the that's fire. It, Good for that okay, so, that's incredible. By the way, shout out to dude. Joe. Joe Kieran and the guy that said that. Joe Kieran and there's two guys I like on CNBC. 
He's one of them. And I've loved that guy since the day started because Joe Karen, and unlike anybody else, was like me. He was in the trenches. He was a true broker, hmm. boozing, doing blow, making cold calls. Fucking Joe Karen led the life. Allegedly. He was a real, true New York City, just hardcore, just crusty broker. And the fact he called out O'Leary, who's full of shit about everything, man. That guy is just a blatant liar. Uh, I love that. I love the way they call him. O- out. O'Leary crazy. has really weird connections to Courtney Love. And really? like the whole history of Courtney Love basically working with the FBI and the CIA to distribute drugs into uh, music scenes. No she kidding. was a, a, I'm, you don't, yeah, do you no. been on the show? I uh, didn't know O'Leary was part of that. 100%. That's... How the hell's O'Leary? No, Courtney Love. That's like the two weirdest entities I've ever heard. I'm telling you, bro. So he has a shady background. Anyways. So that, that's my whole opinion. Like, it's just weird to watch him. He's so smug yeah. on that show. Yeah. yeah. It annoys me. No, nah, it annoys me how smug he is. He's a prick and he's a total just, just, he, you couldn't trust a thing that came out of that guy's mouth. They're right about the Bitcoin thing. He shit on it up until he became a spokesperson for FTX. And even after Bankman got uh, arrested, he was back and the guy saying, no, everyone doesn't know the facts. You got to get all the facts. Like, get the fuck out of here, Kevin. Yeah, when do we ever do that? Anywhere else in life, do we do we wait for the facts to come out? No. Like, people, I mean, like, dude, there's so much evidence. This guy's just full of shit in everything that he does. Like, what are we talking about? What do you mean where else? I mean, I mean, it, it, in law, I mean, our, our, our justice system, that's where, and he's in. No, the I get that. I get that. I get that. But he's asking for the public. I mean, the public does this to everybody with way less evidence. That's true. Like <laughs> way less evidence. I mean, there's yeah. so much, like I have more faith in a lot of these internet snoo- uh, uh, sleuths than I do in our own FBI, you know? I mean, they do some deep digs, and most of these guys put out breadcrumbs that hang themselves. Well, oh, we have a story about him, actually, if you want to hop right on this. Uh, this is this is just crazy. So FTX, is this is from Bazinga. Uh, FTX's Sam Bankman-Fried attempted to regain control of FTX. I'm sorry, I, my whole screen just disappeared. Uh, after it went bankrupt. So here's the uh, here's the lead. Uh, Beleaguered crypto exchange FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried tried to stop bankruptcy proceedings in the U.S. in November to transfer assets from his crypto exchange to foreign regulators. Isn't that strange? I, I mean, the guy is a piece of shit. You know, oh. it's 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 strange for me and you. Do you believe this though? Because it's that? saying it's saying that according to federal prosecutors, he expected lenient treatment from foreign regulators. And that's why he was trying to move the move the coin to to Europe. What do you think about that? Because that kind of coin. flies in the face of this idea that he's wired in here in the states. Yeah, I, I think he's screwed in the states. If he had any chance, it was probably overseas. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, who who knows if this dude hasn't already paid off a government? I mean, with the mon- amount of money he had, they're still trying to find all the monies. And he came out two or three days ago and said, "Huh, the money's there. Anybody can get their money if they want it." Wait and lie. It's yeah. not there. No. No. Balls on this guy though. I mean, he's he's just a just a strange fella. No, he's uh freeze the worst. And and O'Leary backed him the whole entire time. A lot of these guys, oh. anybody that had their their uh their their foot or their hands in with FTX. See, I have uh, a theory back. about him is that because he seems incompetent, right? He's a weird guy. He seems like he doesn't know shit. I think he's just a patsy. Like he's just a guy that's getting paid to get to stand out front while somebody else is just making with the with the coin. That's well, why he seems I, like an I idiot. I definitely believe that he they just did the data on him, who his parents were, what they were connected, what they're willing to do. And he was a perfect guy. It's the same thing. With Jeff Bezos, it's the same thing with uh, Zuckerberg. That's what they do. They find the re- the the most connected people who fit the data fits who they're looking for, and they position them, and then they are just do what they're told. They're lifetime actors. He's one hundred percent that. His parents were straight into this weird, like secret society shit of you know. So 
Yeah, I mean, of course he's just a patsy. That's what they do. They they position these people to be the front of this Why there's things that work behind the scene. Very much a mafia style shakedown. I mean, they I mean, just burn the place down at the end, you know what I mean? And for the insurance money is what they did with this. Yeah, I mean, like, and then the guy from Celsius, the exact same thing, man. It's just like ridiculous. Yeah. And I think it's all done on purpose to get regulation of crypto because they're scared shitless and while simultaneously draining all the money out of it so yeah i mean the guy the guy from uh from celsius pulled out 10 million dollars that was probably his payoff probably to, to just take the blow you know to take it they were like all right dude we'll let you take your 10 mil out and go home you might get prosecuted we'll try to we'll try to protect you he probably ends up dead somewhere Falling off a boat or, or something. faking his own death. Yeah. Here's another interesting hey. story. Nike and Amazon are reportedly yeah. considering uh, acquiring Peloton, which think about where Peloton was just a couple of years ago. And now it's yeah, in that position. A cheap form. That's yeah. A really yeah. Cheap I mean, they're just form. picking that up. Huh? What do you think, Howie? Is Peloton good business? What do you think? I think it's, you know, people love it. It's a great business, but you got what? 90% of them are in gyms. You just go to a gym and use them. They were huge yeah. during the pandemic when people were like, we're never going to be able to go back to gyms ever again. We got to stay in our houses the rest of our lives. People started ordering them. But then when the pandemic ended, they took a beat down. And I mean, the, the stock's price just gone straight down since then. So they're picking that company up for pennies. Well, but yeah, you know, you bring up an interesting point there, Howie. We're seeing now tech, tech companies across the board are having these huge layoffs. Because they all seem to think that the pandemic was just going to continue. People were just going to keep buying laptops, you know, every year. And everybody was going to be at home on their webcams all the time. Uh, and and they're all just having massive lay- Like you saw the Spotify guy, Daniel Eck, told investors that he whoopsie overspent in 2022. I mean, he, he was like a, you know, a kid with his hand caught in a cookie jar. It was the mo- it was a weird, really weird statement. He goes, I probably got a little carried away and over invested. And that's what's happening. Google, I mean, you're seeing it with them. They had to, their founders were back. Sergey Brin and the other guy were back at Google. Those guys haven't been around Google for a long time trying to sh- sort out the shit show over there. PayPal laid off two, three thousand people today. Oh, dude, t- PayPal's in trouble. And they laid PayPal's off a lot of in people. trouble. So many of if, them. Are. If, if, if Twitter goes through, they're trying to be a. A basically, what would it be? A money exchange network, Twitter. So they're going to be able to do everything that Patreon, that that PayPal does. Mm-hmm. And with PayPal threatening to pull money out of your account if you if you spread misinformation, there I try to pull my accounts off there. They wouldn't let me. So I'm going to continue to do it. What do you I'm mean they wouldn't let you? Yeah, I tried to close my accounts. They're like, yeah, we're too busy right now. We can't get back to you. All right, we've got the guests here, guys, if you want to hop to that. All right, let's do it. Okay. We've talked about life insurance a few times on the show. Sam recently bought life insurance to make sure his two girls will be taken care of when he's gone. We all hope we never need life insurance, of course, but mortgage payments, child care, and other expenses don't disappear when you're gone. If you have family like Sam does, like Howie does, you already have plenty of things to worry about. A good life insurance plan can give you extra peace of mind that your family will always be taken care of. Life insurance through your workplace may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it won't follow you if you leave your job. Since life insurance typically gets more expensive as we age, now's the time to buy. Policy Genius gives you a smarter way to find and buy the right coverage for you and your family. Like I said, Sam recently bought life insurance to make sure that his two girls are taken care of, and he's resting a lot easier now thanks to that. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential and just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 per month for a half a million dollars in coverage. And Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. They are not incentivized to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal info is kept private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com 
or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Uh, very excited to have this guest on. Uh, she's an entrepreneur and she has uh, worked at with startups to Silicon Valley, top 500 companies. Please welcome Midori Verte. How are you, Midori? I'm doing great. Midori, I'm very thankful that you would join us. You've uh, classed up the show, so thank you. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. For uh, Midori, for our uh, listeners who may not be familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where they can find you? Yeah, so I've been a serial entrepreneur for almost, uh, well, over 25 years and owning businesses in all kinds of different industries. Um, and where they can find me is at midoriverity.com or at fuel to fire.co. Excellent. So this is a business and financial podcast. Our, our goal here is to help our listeners try to find ways to get, you know, to have their money work harder for them and actually figure out ways that maybe they could start their own businesses, side hustles. Uh, get out of their jobs, maybe they're not happy with. So I wanted to talk to you about the entrepreneur success triangle. Can you tell us the three factors that uh, you think accelerate success? Yeah, it's um, what I see a lot with, I just want to back up for a second because you, you, you have so many different types of listeners, but really what it comes down to, Sam, is regardless of whether you want to be your own boss, you know, you have your own company, or if you want to thrive in a corporate environment, or you want to have a podcast, it's all comes down to what do you want to create? And so the first place that I always recommend someone starts is getting clear on what, you know, what makes them tick, what makes what fires them up. And the way that they do that is so even before they, we talk about the entrepreneur's triangle is their personal mission statement. So that's your core values. That is your, yeah, what, what are your drives? What are your motivators? That's the second one. And then the third one is your zone of genius. What are you freaking good at? What do you love to do? Yes. And then that's, right? That's the, that's the baseline. Start there. So you know whatever you're going to create, whether it's wealth. Why, why do you want to create so much wealth? What is it that you want to create it for, right? Getting clear on that. And once you have that down, then you're going to be fired up. Then you're going to push through more. And especially if you're going to start your own business, you better be clear on what makes your heart tick and like makes you fired up. Otherwise, when you get punched in the gut, which you will, <laughs> as a business owner, you're going to get lots of punches. You're going to get knocked out of the knees. You better have that in alignment because then you'll pick yourself up and you'll keep driving. And it's awesome. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I talk a lot of them. I've been very blessed to be on some successful podcasts, had YouTube channels doing very well. And uh, I think it's very important that you focus on what your brand is very specific. And, you know, in podcasting, I always say, you know, you when they see the title of your podcast, the most successful ones I know are the ones where you know exactly what they're going to talk about. Meaning, let's say, my favorite murder, right? That's or are you are a podcast called Are You Garbage, right? These are funny comedy podcasts that have served, but you know exactly what they're talking about. And a big thing as well, you know, especially for people who are trying to make it in show business, they have a very much of a, a mentality of what do the uh you know the industry want? And I think it's very important. When you're building your own personal build business, that you have to go, what do I want to do? What do I want to talk about? What what brand do I want to create? And find the people who enjoy that brand or need that brand. Because when you start trying to guess what other people want, and I see it happen all in comedy, you get convoluted. It, 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 it's very sloppy and messy. But when you're specific to what you want to talk about and people know what you're talking about, you'll get those people. To what number that is, I don't know, but you will resonate with people. So I totally agree with everything you're saying. Yeah, that, that's it. And, you know, especially if you're going to grow a business, since, we, since we're talking about business a little bit, 
you want to make sure that you're in alignment. You brought it up, Sam, that, that the people that you are, you know, whatever message you're putting out there, whatever brand it is, you want to be bringing in the people that resonate with you because they're going to be more successful. If you're building a team, you want to make sure that whoever's coming in, that they're high level and that they resonate with, with what you're building, your vision, right? Because then your company is going to grow so much faster. I, I agree with that as well. Yeah. That's a great statement. I tell people all the time, like very early into the process, if you feel like the person you're working with isn't carrying their weight, the notion that maybe if things blow up, they'll change. Their, I think people show who they are very quickly. And it's like either they're a plus positive or, or, or a negative. And, you, and if it's a negative and you're in this weekend at Bernie situation where you're just carrying around this weight and you're not doing the, they're not helping you to grow your brand. You really have to ask yourself, is this who I want to be attached to uh, on growing up? And if you're blessed that blows up, let's say you get really big, you're a band, right? You got a band and it just blows up and you don't get along with your bandmates. Well, if you're playing state, you're playing like stadiums, you stay on your side of the stage, I'll stay on my side of the stage, and we'll uh, just cash checks as we rock out. But if you're growing a tiny business, you're going to have to deal with these people all the time. And if you're constantly having the same complaints, it's just not going to be for a positive energy work environment. It's true. Yeah. Who wants to go to a work environment like that? Yeah. And so, and then getting to your, your next, the question that you asked, asked me a minute ago, the entrepreneur success triangle. So we talked about the, kind of the base, right? So that's the personal mission statement. There's three components, but then there's the next stage, right? So you want to build a business, you're ready to build a business. What's how are you going to be the most successful? So I have worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs over the years of all sizes. And Regardless of your size, I see three things that really help them be successful. The first one is being super clear on your goals. What's your vision? What are you creating? Where are you going? Right? So that's the number one thing. And then what is your, do you have accountability for it? Who are you, who's going to hold you to it? Because as an entrepreneur, especially if you're just starting up or um, you don't have, you haven't built out your full awesome team yet, you're going to be wearing all these hats. You're going to be all over the place, trying to put out fires. That's just part of the business. So you want to have accountability, to keep you on your roadmap to your big fat goals. And then the third thing is having a mentor or having someone who's already been there, who knows what they're doing. So if you have those three components in your space, you're going to accelerate your growth. I think that's a big mistake that a lot of young people do and maybe that's our culture now and maybe that's just kind of this not to get too conspiratorial but maybe this is being done on purpose where it's like you don't see a lot of young people picking the brains of people who've been in the game for a very long time because yeah certain things change maybe the style that people are looking for but the basic consumption of anything stays the same. Maybe the the distribution is we've gone from, you know, hand-to-hand -hand markets to the internet. But still, the way you get someone to buy something is pretty basic, you know, and how to reach these people and how to connect on a human level that really helps you to grow. And again, there's a lot of things going on the internet are giving young people maybe access to a market they're not quite ready for. And they're making rookie mistakes that if maybe they had somebody in their life to bounce ideas off of and they were open-minded to it, it might help them uh, not have to make those mistakes. You know, in my life, I was a knucklehead. I listened to a couple people, thank God, or else it would have even gone even crazier. But, you know, like I made I, every lesson I, I say, every lesson I ever learned in life, I had to learn the hard way. And I don't think you have to do that. I think if you listen to people been down the road and have experienced all the pluses and the minuses of the business you're trying to get into, it may help you with some insight and it helps you get a running start. I think, Sam, what you just said, I personally, and that's from dealing with young people right now, I think the main reason that they don't uh, find a mentor or ask questions which could probably they could get answered in 15 minutes and probably save them years of pain 
I think the reason that you don't see it anymore is because why would they ask you a question when they can just put it on Google and they don't have to have an interaction with you? They don't have to sit there in the back of their mind subconsciously and say, you know what? I can listen to Sam talk to me for 30 minutes and I don't know, he might say four or five things that kind of save me pain over the next five years. Or I can just put this question into Google and somebody on the internet will tell me and I don't have to deal with anybody. And in my opinion, that's what's really screwing kids over as far as uh, shitty communication skills. Because look, I have two sons and I see it. It's like the communication level, the skill of talking to somebody and sitting them down, looking them in their eye and saying, you know what? I think you need this product that I have because of this, 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 and this. I think that's hurting them. And I think it is technology that's hurting them. I think Wait until it's right chat now. GPT that they're asking the question. Then it's, I mean, then it's over, dude. Well, it's this society we live in right now. And I understand when you build a business, you want to make as money, make money quickly so you can pay your bills and not be like running around like you're drowning, right? Uh, but there's also something about our society that is very much, I want the cash and prizes. And we've talked about this on the show before. It's like, you know, I have friends of mine that I started open mics and comedy. They're playing Madison Square Garden right now. And if you were to have a conversation with him and interview him on it, on comedy, he would probably tell you a lot of the stories about when he was coming up and everything he had to go through and not so much the Madison Square Garden stories because those those learning lessons are 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 what makes the journey so exciting and what you really cherish in the long run because that guy that you're talking about back today had no clue how successful you would be today and how happy they would be and how you look back in that guy going just keep going because it's going to work out and learn all these lessons you have to because I think the universe I have this theory that the universe warns you and then it shows you and every time it shows you something that's another tool in your tool belt and some of these kids aren't getting tool belts and you can't be mad at them for moving quickly because you know someone's handing you cash and prizes but there's something about listening to people who've done what you've done in one way or another and uh, uh and and just getting some knowledge that maybe google can't tell you and that's nothing gets high because i totally agree with everything he's saying but this notion that the internet has all the answers that maybe someone who's lived the life doesn't is kind of crazy to me. Yeah, and, you know, you guys, I know you're talking about young people, but I see it all the time with older people too. Yeah, I, see, I just sure. got off a call just now with a woman who she has corporate background. She has all kinds of um, skills and uh, successes that she has. And now she's launched her own business. And when I was talking to her, I asked her, you know, I started off saying, okay, well, what what is it that you do? She listed off 10 different things. I help with storytelling. I help with digital marketing. I help with um, with graphic design and all these things. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what you do. I, I can't. So if someone asks me, what does Susie Q do? I say, she does all kinds of things. Who's going to buy from that, right? It doesn't, it's not clear. And so, yes, kids do this, but so do adults. I agree. They I do totally it all agree. the time. Yeah, and you need to like hone that in figure out what your zone of genius is, figure out what your message is, figure out where you're going. We talked about in the very beginning, you know, what's, what do you want and why? And then build backwards from there, but get super clear and then niche down because you're not everything. You can't be everything. And if you do, then you're not going to sell to anybody, but the more that you can niche it down, the more successful you're going to be. I agree. We've had guests in the past bring that up and how important that is is to very be specific about your marketing and who you're marketing to. And this, you might be, oh man, if I go, oh, I'm going to market to this giant group. Well, that that might not work because you're just trying to reach too many. If you have a very specific market, it's easy to market to these people because you're speaking more to them than maybe if you're doing a giant, giant, just throwing a giant fish net. Can I, can I ask really quickly too, how much is that about marketing and how much is that about focus and resources, your own focus and your own resources? 
Tell me more about what you well, mean. Well, well, what I mean is like in, instead of trying to, you know, you, you, if you are trying to be a jack of all trades, you're you're not focusing, uh, you know, because you have limited time in the de- in the day. I imagine it's much uh, it's much better to drill down, like you said, on a, a single a single uh, focus or, or or activity. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, think of your podcast, right? We know that this is about money, right? You know, we're, we're clear on that. This is not about um, grades and school and cooking. It's, it's very niche down. You have a certain type of person who listens to your show and that's who you market to. And that's why it's been successful. However, if you're saying that, you, you know, one day you feel like, you know what, I want to make this pie. I just, I'm so motivated by it. And you come on and you start talking about that. And you start talking about something that doesn't resonate with your audience. Interesting. Wow. You're gonna, no one's going to pay attention. No one's yeah. going to listen. Right. And, and your like, marketing is not going to land with anybody. I feel like we might've learned that lesson in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so uh have we focused on all all three of the factors or is there any more factors those are the three i mean we can dive in perfect. deeper to them whatever you want to no, do no, but... no no no, that's perfect i want to get into what uh, th- i'm not trying to you. i just you have so many wonderful things to talk about i want to make sure we cover them all uh fuel to the fire how do you how to amplify your success with a roadmap to your goals can you talk a little bit about that yeah so with my entrepreneurs Again, you know, as when most entrepreneurs who I meet are called visionaries, right? They have these big ideas, they're super excited, and they want to change the world doing whatever it is that they're doing. The downside of that is that they get all, they're all over the place. A typical visionary is all over the place. They don't want to stay focused because they have all these ideas always coming out of their head. That's a typical entrepreneur. They're great at creativity. And so what we do in Fuel the Fire is we help them create what we call the summit goal mapping framework. So if you think of a mountain, like a big, think of Mount Everest, right? At the very top, you want to get to that peak. We call that your summit. So you want to get to that summit because that's where your big, exciting goals are. That's what you're working towards. So whether it's having a comedy show, whether it's building your brand or your band, or whether it's building a business, your summit is where you want to get to. But to get there, you need to have a roadmap to get there. Otherwise you're going to be all over the place and you're not going to get there. So we chunk it down into 90 day or quarterly goals. And we call those your approach goals, right? Because you're approaching that, that peak and underneath each approach goal are your action steps. Your approach goals are what, what do you need to do to get you closer to your goal? And then your action steps are what are the, the concrete actions you're going to be taking to get you to that summit? And so you just keep on going. So you finish the, the 90 day um, approach goals and then you go on to the next ones. And it's that simple. And so you know, I'll give you an example of a client that I have. I have, um, let's see, I'll, I'll talk about Nick. He has a very successful B2B LinkedIn marketing firm. They grew really fast, are doing great. And they were supposed to sell to Copilot. Copilot backed out the very, very last minute. It was down to the hour and Copilot said, nope, not buying it. And these guys, there's two, two guys who own the business. All of a sudden, you know, they had plans. They knew what they were going to do next. They were, you know, they were excited about that. So instead they ended up having to keep the business and they were depleted. They were blue, you know, their confidence was down. So what we had to do is rework their summit goals, get them re-excited re about what they were building again and change it. So we set that all up. We set up their new summit goals and then we created their approach goals. And so what's happened is now they have a business that is even more wildly successful. They're able to travel because that was one thing that both of them wanted to travel. I know one of them is currently in Colorado, probably on the mountain right now. The other one is in Asia. They've created a business that allows them to live the life that they want and still be highly successful. So that's the power that you can have when you are clear on what you're building and you have those action steps in there. And that's um, about be, being able to change and kind of roll with uh, what comes at you and what hits you. Cause we all get kicked in the ass. Sometimes, sometimes things are going smoothly and, you know, you may lose a business partner that turns around and, you know, ends up suing you or something crazy like that. But uh, so you got to be able to change. Totally. Yep. You yeah. never know. In business, I've, I've had to do it so many times in business, COVID, 
one of our biggest businesses that we own is an entertainment business for Silicon Valley. So imagine what happened when COVID happened. All of a sudden we were writing checks and sending them back to people and was we didn't know if we were going to even make it. Um, so we had to pivot big time, but that's, that's just part of business. That's just part of being entrepreneurs. You, you okay. have to have that, but that's part of life too, right? Yeah. yeah things happen. It's spiritual for sure. There's a couple of things you brought up and, you know, there's uh this thing called trans surfing, which is this notion that there is an infinite amount, infinite different versions of you. They're all going out one time. And the question is where you are compared to where that version of you is. and What's it going to take for you to get the hair? What is the things that I'm going to have to do? Now, the truth is you can do anything, but sometimes this version and this version, there's there's a lot of things you're going to have to do to get to that. And then there's other, but everything is like, here, who am I today? Where do I want to be? And what are the steps I'm going to have to take to get to that? to have that vision and have that goal. I, you know, I'm in sobriety, uh, I'm in recovery and I talk a lot to newcomers about, you know, it's like you're getting sober. That's great. What do you want to do with it? Because getting sober is a lot like, uh, you know, uh, when you get in your car, you're like, you don't just get in your car and drive. You always have a destination. So you want to have a destination you get to, because that will ha- help you with picking each step you want to go- take to get to that goal. So I think it's very, very important to do that. And you're totally right. And I also think that it, I, and you know, I'm a very spiritual guy, that it's also very important to understand that you could go into something with a, a goal. This, this is a goal. Like, let's say me moving to Hollywood. Like, if you ask me, what career would I like to have? You know, when I moved to Hollywood, I probably would have said, Something like Vince Vaughn, right? Uh, that would have been a great career. But that's not what the universe had planned for me. And I'm very, very happy where I am today. And you have to be open-minded that sometimes the universe might have other glorious plans for you. And if your only goal is this, one, the only thing you'll accept is this one goal, you may miss some beautiful exits to some beautiful destinations that could just bring you just as much happiness than this really high goal that maybe not this moment is in the cards. You never know. You just got to be open-minded to what the universe open has in store for you. And look for those opportunities. That was a great story that you just shared, Sam. Totally agree. Yeah. You got to be, you have to be willing to be open to it because there might be some, you might've had your idea that perfect, I'm going to be just like Vince Vaughn, but really when you get there, it might not be so pretty. Right. Yeah. And then there's these other opportunities that are there that are so much better, so much more in alignment. And that was the right journey for you. Yes. I totally agree with that. So let's get into ignite success. Cause I think that's really important. A lot of people come up to me all the time. It's like, we listen to this show. We, we're going to start this whole business. And like, you know, you got some people like, oh, I got kids. I got to work my nine to five job. You know, a famous comic that a good friend of mine called the immigrant mentality, you know, like how your, 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 you know, your grandfathers, your great grandfathers and your great grandmothers, they worked 90 jobs and did whatever I had to do to build that brand. It's like, what are, what are some of your thoughts on what you could do proven systems for accountability and to ignite success? Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll answer that with a, with a story of one of my clients who I've been working with for almost two years now. When I first started working with her, she was she was a professor. She was a university professor, making barely forty thousand dollars a year, and that was her full time thing. She was scared to death. She was raising a daughter, single mom. She couldn't afford her bills, and she was just constantly stressed out. Right when she came to me, she's like, "Midori, I really want to start this business, but I'm not an entrepreneur." She had a PhD. But she's, she discredited that and said, I, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm like, well, I'll freaking take your PhD. But anyway, we started working together and we set up, you know, what is it that you want to do? We started with our personal mission statement. What makes your heart sing? What, what fires you up? What do you want to create, right? That's in alignment with you. We got super clear on that, created her summit goals, created her approach goals, her action steps. And she just put her head down. She kept going and going and going. She had challenges that came up, but I'll tell you what happened this year or 2022, she hit her goals four months early. She was able to go on vacation to the beach to, she would go out to Florida six times in a year. That was, those were her goals. 
and she's now been able to remodel our house and she has financial freedom. That is the power of staying focused on what you want to achieve. Did everything go exactly how she wanted? Hell no. There's still things that, that freak her out. She's like, you know, I know I'm bringing you this money, but she's still scared. Things could change. But she knows that she now has this habit of looking at her summit goals, knowing what it, she has that path, right? She knows what it looks like. And she knows that if she puts her head down and she just keeps on grinding and getting it done. She's going to see success. And it freaking works. Just keep it easy and simple. So this I is believe given, this is kind of like, listen, I'm having flashbacks right now because when I worked in finance and we went through a horrible bear market, we were losing clients. Clients wanted to kill you. We're waking up. We're going to the office. We're going over and we're drinking half a bottle of Jack so we can deal with our clients the rest of the day because the world's coming into, to an end. So I went out and hired this life coach. And she brought me to this office and she grabbed a marker and got in front of this big white screen. And she told me this story about how I have gremlins coming at me every day. And she's like, you got to be able to ward off the gremlins because the gremlins will take you down this road. I got to be honest with you. It really freaked me out a little because I got so confused about gremlins. Never really liked the movie, had nightmares. But she, she started... Writing on the board, you have to keep these critters away. She spelled critters, C-R-E-E-T-E-R-S, and that was it. I went right back to the restaurant and drank some more <laughs> and went to work, and that was the last time I, I had that life coach for about 35 minutes. But you sound very professional. I'm glad you haven't mentioned shit about gremlins because I would have just jumped right out the 6-4 window. I, just life coaches, man. I, I just had a bad experience, but you sound like you know what the hell you're talking about. I, I, I am time. so... Oh, yeah, I am so into visualization. Every day, every day, I visualize what I'm doing in my my goals for my day and my life goals. And I always am amazed at how many things I end up checking off that list. It's unbelievable to me. And I think it's very important to visualize that because when you visualize it, you 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 put out to the universe that's possible. And some people are so afraid to go big with it, okay? And I go, it's free. Write the biggest dream you have. It's free. It's free. Yeah. Try it. And you'll see how close you get to that stuff. I'm totally into the spirituality. I'm totally into this, this uh, manifestation. I think it's really important. And I think that People just aren't taught the power of manifestation and how it can work in business. And if you, pr I believe in, I believe law of attraction, and I also believe in model of abundance. I think it's very important to, if you do work on hard on getting something, that you also give it away. And I've seen a lot of people get it that didn't give it away, and they lost a lot of it because that's not how the universe works. And that's my opinion. So I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, last couple of things, then we'll let you go. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, let's get into, because you kind of talked about mission statement already. Let's finish up on uncover your zone of genius and how to op uh, how to optimize it. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I, I just want to hit on your your manifestation really quick because that is huge. And but where a lot of people get disheartened by it is because they think of these big things and they think of, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to make $2 million in one year, even though I haven't even made my first dollar yet. Right. Yeah. And then they don't and they're like, this, this shit doesn't work. Right. But what it is, is they're, they're thinking too far ahead. Their, their brain is telling them that's a bullshit story. It's not going to work. Yeah. And then that it does, of course it doesn't work. It's too far right. of a reach. And so it has to be, you have to do it in increments I think that's why we do the 90 day goals because you build up and you're like, okay, wait, I did that. That was awesome. I, I achieved those things I thought were going to be tough, but I did it. So you're building up that confidence and then you can stretch a little bit further. That's how it works. That's how manifestation works. If you're setting something that's way out of reach and you don't believe it, you won't achieve it. You, you I have totally to do agree. It with that. That's a great point. That's a, you just said something so important because I remember these new brokers would come in the office and this kid one day opened up his, his office. He was getting ready to go and he had pictures of helicopters all over his office. And I was like, dude, so what you used to fly helicopters? And he was like, no, man. He goes, but I'm going to make, my goal is I want to make so much money over the next two years. I'm going to buy myself a helicopter. 
And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then, and then you're going to go to like astronaut school and go to the moon maybe right after that. And you know, <laughs> probably discover cancer the following year, I'm sure. Uh, like you just said it because some people have goals. It's like, come on, seriously, just yeah. start little, you know, start little and grow <laughs> it. And you get, never know when it's going to change to another goal. Yeah. But you're that you're closer to, and then you know it's like you can go big. I also don't think manifestation is on anybody's timeline but itself, and the universe will provide to you when it thinks that you're ready for those gifts. That's really my belief, and I'm kind of in a problem right now with crypto. I put my crypto on exchange, and the exchange went belly up, and they won't give me back my crypto. And, you know, Johnny over here has been telling me, like, oh, this one crypto just paid out. It's been like 10 years. And I go, okay, I really have a feeling that this money is going to come back to me right when I need it the most. Like, I'm going to be like, oh, dude, I could use I could use some money right now. Things are a little tight. And then, bang, out of nowhere, 10 years from now, they're, they're going to be, okay, here's your Celsius money that we should have gave you back a long time ago. But now it's perfect, the perfect timing for me to get it. And I really do believe that. So I have an open mind to when it's going to happen. I think the universe give, gives you the cash and prizes when it thinks you're ready for the cash and prizes. Now, who do you, who do you see bringing that to you, Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy? The Easter Bunny. <laughs> the Easter Bunny. You have someone there. Yeah. yeah maybe, so and, and maybe, Sam, maybe it'll be where you don't need it. And all of a sudden it does come, right? You found, you you hit it, you had some other financial investments, you start your own business, whatever it is, and you nail yeah. it. And then the money comes and that's a point where you can go give it away. Like you talked about, maybe that's what it is. So instead of getting, we yeah. talked about this earlier. So let's just kind of tie it back in. Instead of getting so focused on, shit, I lost all that money. Now my life is going to be over, right? It's, it's like, okay, well, this is part of the journey. What did I learn from this? What, what's, what's to come? Let me just move on instead of getting so stuck on, on what might've happened then. You just said, it. I, Look, I think, I think that's probably truthfully, I think that's probably what will happen to Sam. I think over the next few years, it's just going to work and things are going to happen. And that cash just will be there, but it's going to be there through different avenues that you didn't even see. And in five, 10 years, you'll look, back at that, you'll look back at that Celsius shit and laugh at it. I, that's my own. Yeah, I'm, with you. I'm with you. But Dory, thank you so much for coming on. You knocked it out of the park. One of my favorite episodes we've done. So thank you for coming on. You have great energy and you beam light. And so one more time, can you tell us where they can find you? Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun chatting with you guys. Uh, so they can go to fuel2fire.co. So it's fuel2fire.co. And that's where they can find me. All right. We'll make sure that link is in the description. I'll send all that to Johnny. So he has your press kit and he can grab all that. And again, thank you for coming on. I look forward to talking to you down the line uh, again on this show or maybe one of my spiritual shows. We'll figure it out. Sounds good. Good luck with your crypto. I hope it comes back to you soon. Please. Thanks for having uh -huh. me. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on, Midori. Take care. All right, guys. I want to tell you about our friends over there at Copy My Crypto and our good friend, James McMahon, everybody. That's right. Guys, we've seen so many people make ridiculous money from crypto. But did you know it's easy for you to do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership site shows you the coins that youtuber james mcmahon personally holds and allows you to copy them it's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing you don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest as you simply do as he does so let me tell you more about james he runs crypto with james youtube channel which despite heavy censorship has over 26,000 subscribers. Since March 2020, he's told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins. Had you put $100 into each, it went on to be worth $123,000. All of the 26 coins, his top pick of the year called Phantom, went up 692 times from what when he said. That's one call, that one call alone has retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You, you can go to YouTube and verify this yourself. If you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing 
and head over to copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's copymycrypto forward slash Sam. That's S-A-M. You've, you'll find the proof of everything we've said, but my listeners get full access for just $1. Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash Sam. The recession is here, guys. You can suffer like everyone else or choose to thrive. James is the real deal. Go visit the site now. All right. Thank you, Midori. That was a great episode. Uh, I, I mean, a great interview. I enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, man, it was great. So uh, did we have any more stories we wanted to talk about? Do we want to go into answering questions? What do you guys want to do? I got one question. Both of you guys would be good with this. Especially Sam would be great with this because this is big news right now. You got all kinds of news on Twitter. What's going on? Musk going to say? Musk leaving? Who's he going to hire? What's going to go on? Are they going to bring accounts back? Are they going to start banning accounts? Sam, what's the deal? Because right now all I'm reading is that the U.S. government is following suit like these other governments like India, Singapore, a few others. And they're starting to really track down and and watch social media. And they're trying to sift through and ban certain things, not, not ban. In other words, free speech is going to be a big gray area. So they, they're all, all they're talking about is this Section 230. I yeah. know you guys must know about this. Is it Section, yeah. Section 230. Uh, provides immunity to online platforms from civil liability based on third-party content, as well as immunity for removal of content in circum certain circumstances. So now they're saying that the U.S. government could really start coming down on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter. I mean, what do you guys think well, about Can I just say really quickly before you jump in, Sam, because I know you have a lot of thoughts on this, is that when I worked at newspapers, we specifically, because of that rule we would not moderate the comments because if we moderated them at all that meant we were responsible for moderating them legally do you get what i'm saying yeah. so we just let it be a free-for-all so that but, the government later down the road wouldn't come in and say like hey you're obviously moderating them so you're chip picking and choosing and that's how we managed it uh and it was something that everybody was really uh, concerned about though was the liability of uh, but so that is are... what it, that is what has been the problem, Johnny, because they are putting their thumb. Right. Um, I, yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Some some companies with more resources did it a different way. They they chose to heavily moderate. But our solution, because we were a small, you know, newspaper with not a lot of employees, uh, you know, who could dedicate themselves to moderating comments, we didn't do anything. We didn't do. We did none of that. Well, there there's a lot going on right now with that. Uh how he something called the Twitter files have been dropped and there's been a ton of them. And it's basically how the FBI has and the uh, Homeland Security and NHI um, have has been censoring uh, speech on Twitter. Right. And if people think it's only Twitter, they're ridiculous. It's oh, way it's worse on YouTube, yeah, it's which everywhere. is why I'm rooting for chat. GPT to come and kick in the dick of Google. Google's scrambling right now because if Chat GPT, which t gets in to the lexicon, is that what I'm talking about, Johnny? What is what is it called when it's in the culture? The vernacular. I don't know. If the it's ethos. The I don't know. And the common. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It would go wide. I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. That Google is in trouble because Google search engine has been so biased for the last. Five, minimum of five years, six years, that people aren't getting any good results. And they're already seeing some stuff with chat GPT as well. It's, it's already got some balance, but people hate Google. And what if, what if these guys, what if this pertains to that chat GPT too? And they're next. The government comes in and says, no, you can't put that up or that up. It's possible. Anything is possible. The well, point chat is, GPT doesn't allow, I mean, there's no commenting on that though. That would just be something that would give you like feedback, right? It's but the point is this, is that we've already seen the U.S. government violate the First Amendment by censoring speech. And that's that's what the government wants to do, because, you know, this this whole theory, dude, that, you know, the government, DARPA, they create the Internet. But I think like a lot of great inventions, it gets away from them because dudes with a lot of time on their hand tinker with these things. And because it's desire 
to create value for females. They create this market for them where they create this great add-on or a, a, a counter to what the government's put out that it gets so powerful, it gets away from them. So now they're struggling because how are they going to curtail freedom of speech? Europe's lost, bro. Twitter's in deep trouble in Europe. Everywhere. <laughs> India. All these other places. <laughs> and it's, it is because they're coming down. <laughs> you, can't, you can say this, but you can't say that. He's going to have to run. He's going to just have to run different Twitters in different countries. But in America, the government is not allowed to do it. They have been violating that. And that's they're going to put on some theater about how they're not going to put up with that anymore. But that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, man. I mean, it's, it seems like there's such a gray area in that whole freedom of speech versus on uh, social media. The gray area is insane. You can do this. You can't do this. I don't know. I mean, I just read today where the, they're, they are going. It looks like they're going to start passing different bills. I don't know. We'll see. They're going to try, I, man. They're going to try. They're going to try. I mean, they're going to try. We'll yeah. see. I think a lot of this is theater. Maybe you're right. No. I hope you're right. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting, man. It'll be interesting. That was the only it thing. It will be interesting. That's part of the news I, I wanted to mention on that because I saw that today on Twitter. All right. Uh, Howie, uh, you got a pick for, for the show this week? I'm telling you right now, here's the pick. Coinbase, if it goes up another two, three points, buy puts, go out three, four months and buy puts on Coinbase. I think that baby's coming back down. All right. All right. Respect. Right All right, on. guys. I thought this was a wonderful episode. I mean, again, it was good. This is this was a good one. I think this is what we want the show to be, and we hope you guys got a lot of value out of it. And that's all I got to say. So, uh, Howie, we, oh, yeah, real quick, you can see Howie Dewey and myself at the Dojo of Comedy, February, let's see, February 17th and 18th. We're going to be there live. Myself, Howie, we're going to have a great time. And I'm very excited to be out there with Howie again. And we'll make some magic happen. All right, real quick, guys, if you haven't joined the Patreon, join the Patreon because we have another free contest. Uh, all you do is just pick a stock, wait 30 days. Uh, if you're in the top three, I always send you a free Do Crew t-shirt, baby. It's what it's all about, winning t-shirts. Let's go. Here's Anything else, go to samtribly.com for all of my dates, and we'll see you soon. Great show. Talk to you guys soon.